Hi everyone, welcome back to Doll Week. We've been having the best time at the Grovey and Doll Museum in Pacific Grove, California. We're bringing you another amazing experience of dolls and the difference between all of the things we've been showing you before in the museum and the difference between what you're gonna see right now is this is a real working brick and mortar doll shop in uh, Pacific Grove, California. Everything in this video that you're gonna see is for sale. All of the things you saw before are from the museum. Everything in here is for sale. The Carmel Doll Shop is one of our most active Ruby Lane members. They have a shop full of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of items, which we will link to in the video. Tons of things for sale. Many of those things you're gonna see in this video, and some of them are not. If you see something you love, contact Michael and David, the owners of the shop, through the video, through their Ruby Lane shop, on the telephone, and you can buy anything you see in this video. How cool is that? We're gonna turn around to Michael real quick and he's gonna give us a couple more details about what's gonna happen in this tour that we are having today. Hi, Ruby Lane. Hi. How are you, Rachel? We are so good. It's, it's just good. been the best time ever. Yes, it it's been so nice having you. Here. Thank you for having us. Well, we, now we're in your wonderful shop. Yes, and um, what we decided we were thinking and strategizing is that we've shown you things from uh, our museum and you have museum quality. Well, as I've said quite a few times, museums, the things in museums are really telling a story. Mm -hmm. So what we've decided to do, we're going to let you, Rachel, pan the room for the people that have never been here so that they can see what's, in, what's here. But each of us, and I have Judy and Kay and David, we're From the Carmel to... Doll and Study Group, and of course David is one of the owners of the Carmel Doll Shop and Grovey Museum back there. We're each going to pick a couple of items that we feel, and it's totally their call, that we feel would, would be museum quality. Which really museum quality is, is what would work in a museum. So I'm going to let them go first and let them pick. And what I'll do is I will clean it up in showing a range of things, but I'm gonna let them pick first. And I know that they're all stressing out. Oh, they're back they there, they're but, screwing around back there having a good, how, how does one pick? While they're stressing, I think you should go and just show give them. Give them a virtual tour. Give them a virtual yes. tour. Yeah, we are here in your doll shop and there aren't very many brick and mortar doll shops left in the country. I would say there's probably less than 10. And it is, this is when you walk into this shop, it feels like you're walking into a wonderful toy shop from the 1800s era in France. When I walked in at the start of doll week, I just couldn't believe it. This is so much fun. So they are in the background grabbing their favorite dolls that they're gonna show us that are a museum, what they think should be in a museum. Everything that you guys are seeing right now and share the video so more people can hop onto our feed is for sale. So all of these items that you see right here in this case, I absolutely recognize them from their Ruby Lane shop. This gazebo right here is in their Ruby Lane shop. You can find all of these wonderful things in their Ruby Lane shop. And it is the Carmel Doll Shop on Ruby Lane. We are looking through glass right here. There is so, so, so much to see. If you guys have never been to the Carmel Doll Shop, you are here right now. But if you ever are in Pacific Grove, California, and you're a doll lover, collector, get here. Look at this wonderful miniature toy shop. We hope you guys have been enjoying a lot of the activities that we have been doing all week. This is not the end of it. We still have several more seminars. But if you're a doll collector, I don't know about you, but eventually you just got to kind of look at stuff that is for sale. <laughs> Like we said earlier, there's no such thing as a bad hair day at the Grovian or at the Carmel Doll Shop. This is the real deal, everybody.
comment, like, share. You can ask us questions. Michael and David are standing by, so if you see something you have a question on in our video. I'm, I'm standing by. They're working really hard. He, they're in <laughs> deep discussion. He is. He's right here, everybody. No, so, they're in discussion. Oh, they I'm, are in deep I'm discussion. Just watching. They're working very hard over there, uh, choosing the items that we are going to have our little roundtable discussion about today, which is going to be so much fun. So basically, right now, you are getting a one-on-one -on -one shopping experience with Michael Canadas here at the museum. He is willing to wait on you hand and foot virtually so if you have any questions ask them now right when you walk in you see the Rose Percy books and then this wonderful theater can you tell us about this this is a um, an opera house that David built for us in 1996 Amazing. for a special event that we did in our, our first shop and um, you know I just said to him one day I want an opera house and he made it. And I have a, you know, my background in, in that and a love for that. And he made it for, for, for us. And you know, now it's many, many years now since that's happened. And I looked at the arrangement of the composers, and I'm a lot more mature now. And I would rearrange them, like I rearrange everything. To, to make it right, but it's there now, and that's the way it is. Well, you, but, uh, you're you a pretty lucky man to say I want an opera house, and you get something like this. This is the size of some people's houses. Well, it, you know, and the, the, it, it actually has, um, it has been very useful. I mean, this usually has some kind of tableau in it, but it, it when there's an event that Rose Percy is invited to the event out here, because she's you know, in the back now, in her, her special place back there, this is where she she hangs. And which is really good because with the red walls and, and her patriotic theme, it works really, really good. But usually there is a gaggle of French fashion dolls in, in the So office. fantastic. If you guys would like a copy of the Rose Percy book, somebody just commented and said they wanted one, they can get it on your website, right? Yeah, I think they can. If not, if you can't get it, if it's not, we may not have gotten to that quite yet, but um, check back with us. Okay. Yeah, because um, we're a little behind with things. They, you guys have been so busy getting ready for Doll Week. It has been just such an adventure, and we have several other programs that are coming up in, in the week. This is not yes, the end. Yes, that's not the end. But you just got to give them a little something. It's kind of hard to go to the mall without coming home with a little something, so we're going to... We're going to give you guys a little treat because all of these things are absolutely wonderful. And we're going to see some of the museum quality things here in a minute that are actually available at the Grovian, uh, at the Carmel Doll Shop. Look it up there, you guys. I don't know about you, and I have been here all week, but if I came into a doll shop like this, I wouldn't leave for hours. Rachel, people usually don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that can be a good thing and a bad I thing think sometimes. Ra Rachel's gotten used to um, people coming, walking down Forest Avenue and then pressing their cheeks up against the right. glass. Right. They kind of just smack into the, into the glass because it's so amazing. I think some of them faint. This is unlike any doll shop I've ever been to. I've been wined and dined and they've fed me and it's just been the best experience ever. Again, these items that you are seeing are in the Carmel Doll Shop's Ruby Lane Shop. These Lensies right here, this grocery market is definitely one of their uh, cute items that they have listed in the last couple weeks. So many things. We will be linking to their shop in the video. If you guys are tuning in, share the video so you can get more doll people in on the fun. Rachel, I think you're going to have to speed up your tour. Okay. This group, we're, they, they're they working. Have, they have our long table discussion. All right, we're gonna get some complaints here because I'm just kind of cruising over. But again, if you guys want to see a lot of these, and uh, you can see them 
at the car uh, in Ruby Lane. But we are giving you guys a little, a quick play-by-play. -play. Okay, we're going quick. It's kind of hard to go quick. Look at this. Again, we are not in the Grovian Museum. We are in the Carmel Doll Shop, where everything is for sale. I hear some wows on the other side of the room. If you would like a little mini Presepio, look at this. So share, 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 like, comment, everything that you can think of because we are here and we are live and it is doll week and it is the best. So, the ladies of the doll study club, the Carmel doll study club, uh, actually, we just have to open this case right here. They've emptied that case out. Oh, they emptied it out a little bit. Oh, yes, they did. Well, Judy and Kay and David have picked their, their top picks for what they think should uh, qualify to be in a museum, which there's a lot of different reasons why we think things should be in museums and we're going to go look at those items right now but again we are not at the Grovian Museum right now we are in the Carmel doll shop this is a real live working doll shop that you can actually go in and shop and buy things isn't that incredible Catherine Peterson just tuned in hi Catherine hi Catherine we're shopping right now Catherine Okay, Absolutely. we've kind of been going going at lightning speed here, but we want to see what your top picks are from the uh, from the Carmel doll shop to see what would be in a museum if you could choose. I think uh, okay, I'm gonna have to cut them off. Okay, we have one more. We have a lot more wax and all original. I have to cut them off. Yeah, this would take all day. Look at these selections, and there is a little bit of something. They're all different. We see all kinds of things right here. You know, this is the three of them. You and I didn't even get a choice. You didn't choose anything. No, I thought I was going to kind of fill out what they missed out as far as telling a story. But this is really great. These are not my choices. These are all Kay's, all their choices. Judy, and David's choices. And it's an, it's an amazing cross-section of items that absolutely, not only could they be in a museum, they have been in museums. So I think I'll, we should probably start at the very beginning. So I think I'll start at the um, Grodner Tall's um, uh, fish market and meat market. Look at that. This, is a wonderful piece and this did come from a museum and this is a really really amazing piece that just tells you such a story of you know outdoor markets uh, it also tells you about uh, take, yeah David's gonna take the dome off so you can see it you can really um, get in close here and of course in the early early 19th century obviously they didn't care about sanitation you know you just had your meat hanging out cured um, and your seafood mixed together. But that is, I totally agree with them that that's a museum item. That is totally a museum item. You know that what? is the so Grovian, cool. The Grovian would have that, but as I've said earlier this week, you know, the Grovian got to pay their bills too. The Grovian <laughs> does have to pay their bills, and, and it, it, that's got to be hard once in a while yes, to say, is. you know, this doesn't get to go to the museum. And this is, and this is another thing I totally agree on that this is a paper mache in a room, uh, a, a box, and it's an incredible, 1840s, it's an incredible 1845 to 50 actually, and it's absolutely, totally museum quality. It's a Victorian whimsy. That's so it could, neat. It not only could it go into a museum of childhood or dolls, this could go into a, um, um, a historic home as parlor art. And then going, staying in a chronological time frame, this is a wonderful thing that um, a lot of people think. Oh, Who picked my what? 
<laughs> Who picked this one? Who picked that one? I did. David did. David did. Okay, this is a, a wonderful piece. A lot of people think that this is a, um, a peddler. This is not a peddler. This is a society lady. This is a charity bazaar seller. And we've talked a lot this week about philanthropic endeavors through, through dolls and how they made money. This was one way that they ladies got together. They opened a fair and they brought out the things that they made. And this is a really Look at that. beautiful piece. Again, totally original. It's like a craft show. It's like a craft show. If you had people that like were really, really, really super talented, and um, and this again is She's a very whim proud of her a things. whimsy parlor art. This was not for a kitty to play with. This would have gone in the parlor, um, you know, to 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 show off all the beautiful things. So cool. And then chronologically, the next we have a wonderful uh, French paper mache with a phenomenal hairstyle. I don't think that style. that's on the website or uh, Ruby Lane. So yeah, several of these things are not. Yeah, several of them are not. But you know, if you if you want them, you can just you call. Know, call me. <laughs> and call right now. <laughs> yeah, and uh, um, it's a it's a nice piece. You can text. Yeah, yeah you can call <laughs> us, but the phones are off because <laughs> we haven't done you know uh, all the things we've done this weekend or week. We didn't want to have um, phones ringing, which was so nice. Thank yeah. you guys. I and mean, we had you enough didn't... with people trying to. Bar, you know, break in. All the, <laughs> all the postmen in Pacific Grove know that we're we're doing Doll Week. They all know. Yes, they've yeah. all been very yeah. very nice. So I mean, she's Look a wonderful that. piece she's, too. Her uh, cap sleeves are just yes, amazing, amazing. Those are lega mutton sleeves. Lega mutton mm -hmm. sleeves. Lega, mu lega mutton sleeves. If you think about it, they're shaped like that. Okay. Um, and then another one, kind of staying in a chronological, um, is this really petite English poured wax, totally original. Um, you know, you see the dress was originally a, a wool, but a fuchsia and fuchsia, fuchsia wool fades very, mm. very quickly, but it mellows to a beautiful color. And she's got a, a beautiful face. She's got short hair. That does not make her a boy. You know, I think we talked about mm -hmm. uh, short hair, they lice, cut, and hair. Um, lice and lice uh, and you know, diseases where you, um, fevers where you lose your hair. So you, you wanted to give your child a doll that was what they were going through. So this would be a nice gift to give someone who just had an attack of lice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know what, if you give me a doll like this, I'll get some lice. Because <laughs> they've got now shampoo for it. They didn't have that then. And then, of course, to add, um, I'm going to lay her down because I'm not sure I can really stand. Um, to add a little whimsy to the whole thing, display, they picked this really, really cute Christmas tree filled with beautiful little things. And, you know, again, not only is this museum quality, it came out of a museum. This was part of the Angel's Attic collection. And that. that's how exactly how they had it. It's a um, feather tree, it's with goose feathers and it's got really really nice items on it if you want to give your dolls a christmas tree full of yeah, all of at, the look wonderful at how cute ornaments that is. yeah look at look that at, she could actually just go for it <laughs> you know and this is this is a cutie um again not on our website um but yeah. you know j yet but it will be a bit, but you can always contact just us. call and judy picked this out and judy did the wonderful presentation on Daisy and uh, helped with Door of Hope uh, and, and did Door of Hope too. Um, as I said with Daisy, Judy loves a pretty face. Now this is a little outsider step because she's, she's still the teeth, she's not quite sure, but they're making her happy. And it's, but it's a beautiful doll. And these, I think the Gigators, this is Jules Nicholas Steiner Gigator, they're very underappreciated. And I'm gonna show you something that a lot of people don't know about them. They are the first, by the way, the first French Pepe. These were 1860s, they started and they went on for, for, for quite a while. But here's what they do. Gigator means agitated. So it's, she's agitated. She's about to get giggy with it. She's gonna get giggy with it if she, you know, if she cooperates. 
This is what I, this this is what always happens when they're on television. Yeah, well, you know what? Her her pants. She's got nice pants. David will do it. I'll see. <laughs> Cooperate. Blame it on the giggy. We're gonna spank her. <laughs> Yeah, they do Can't that whenever you're going, oh, let me show you. An always, automaton. always. Always. Never fails. Nope. Oh. So she's crying when she's laying down. A lot of she's people don't know. She's upset because she lost her shoe. Yeah. Oh, she's, she's crying. so cool. Then when you pick her up, she changes her mama, oh, mama. And mama papa. Oh, so it's actually two like different lying up. down. It's crying. How cool is that, everybody? Now, if you were a, a child up. in the 1860s, Amazing. 70s, that is 80s, like magic. 90s. It is like magic now. It's it, like it, 1860s it, magic. Yeah. Yeah. So this, I think that them choosing this, on blue doll. we have, right. yeah, yeah, and that is on on blue with the white fingernails. Um, choosing this, it kind of gave the innovation part of the story that we're trying to tell, that some of these things, don't, okay, they don't have innovation. They don't have mechanics. Mm -hmm. This is using innovation and mechanics. And it's the only doll on the table that they chose with an open mouth with teeth. The rest are all closed mouths. She is way cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next, I'm gonna jump over here because Judy picked way more than her allotment. Fair share. Fair, fair <laughs> share. But she picked this, this school room. And if I would like to drag this back into the Grovian because it's the cutest thing in the world. And we had a sewing workshop where they dressed uh, Bentney Kessners based on one of our Bentney Kessners. And those little girls all sat in the so chairs perfectly. Cute. So as a museum, you could have a whole school of all this girls, or you could have a school of bunny rabbits. Um, if you have a you, bunch of all this girls, you need yeah, this. Yeah, or you could put and you also can write to, on the you could put right on the chalkboard and and I love it says Guten Morgen Kinders. Does it come with the wonderful rabbit? It, well, it could. It could. Sure, it could. <laughs> Anything's any. Let's make a deal. Anything's possible in this in this uh, Look seminar. Look at the beautiful um, coats. Oh, the coats are so yeah. cute. And I just think this is. And again, they picked something they didn't know. This was part of the Angel's Attic Museum. Look at that. So it was a museum piece for 25 years, 30 years. It's adorable. So then the next thing they picked, which we show this in a tram, and this is on, I think, Ruby Lane, and this is a little Kessner doll, made, dressed, for, boxed and dressed for uh, the French market, and they picked this one. So I thought that was really kind of nice, and if you think about it, you have a museum, you prop this up in a case so that you can see it laying down. You hang that on the wall above it. Oh, it's, that is a museum exhibit. So much. You do not need 67 all this dolls. No, you do not. You need the one that has, you know, the oomph. She does have oomph and she yeah. comes with so much and great stuff. And the thing about stuff. it too is, is a lot of our things in our museum, they have, they got to work for a living. So you know, in a sense of this piece, if you had a museum, this is a piece that you could have replicated for classes. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really a neat thing. They, they're spot on with that being a museum item. And there, there's a reason these ladies are spot on. You two have, you, you, you're collectors, you're seasoned collectors. You guys have been collecting for a long time. That's why you were featured in our videos and uh, why Kay is the museum uh, volunteer coordinator here. You guys do so much. and you They are, see a lot of you know stuff. It. Yes, they <laughs> see a lot of stuff. So these ladies have fantastic taste. Well, and, and also too, I should go into our club association, which really, if you really think about the Grovian, the doll shop, the club, it all kind of swirls together into our big old clubhouse. They have seen over 26 years, 109 original presentations. We did early on some, you know, kind of slide programs that, you know, were sent to us. And we realized that that does not work for us. Mm -hmm. We need to see the stuff. We need to, sometimes we have a speaker that speaks to us, but most of the time there's give and take which is what we've done, I think, all, all week, week on Doll mm -hmm. Week, because that's 
that's where they get the enjoyment out of it. Am I wrong? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Is the give and take, mm -hmm. and sometimes we share, like if we have, we have meetings that are called summits, where everybody brings cloth dolls. We probably had the last meeting 100 cloth dolls. We've done a Jumeau summit. We had 150 Jumeaux from paper mache's, Pierre Jumeau, to 1960s dolls that were Marc Jumeau. So we do. So fantastic. So they they do know they've been around. They've been around, yeah. and they they, yeah. they have seen a lot of things, and so it is. And this was look, this was Ju this was Judy's pick, and this is a Tulier and a really large one, and she likes her dolls by the pound, because <laughs> this is a twenty-five pounder at least. <laughs> and but here, here it is. It's back to the beautiful face, and it's got the beautiful face, and the clothes, and you know. It's not like you can get a doll like this every day. No, no, she's wonderful and magnificent. And one of the first things you see actually when you walk in the Carmel doll shop. Yes. Her yeah, costume is yeah. fantastic. Yes. How I mean, tall is she? I think she's 32 inches tall. She's 32 inches tall. Yeah, I think that, but maybe she's bigger than that. Well, maybe we could look at the wanted, tag. If you wanted a doll, this is a doll. I shortchanged us. She's 36 inches. Christian Sims just said this one is my favorite of the picks. Well, good, good. And it's then so um, I kind of jumped, but then I should go to the fat French fashion dolls. Did you go to the paper mache? You did, yes. Yes, I did the paper mache. So here we have a, a listen, that's totally original. Jumeau French fashion doll. That fits a criteria for a museum when you have originality mm -hmm. and all of that. And you know what? It's pretty. But she really needs this guy. <laughs> so here we have a super duper early brew. This is a, a, a early brew man. And I think they work together. You really, if you were going to do a museum scene, you have a background of a garden and you have him, them having a romantic interlude. <laughs> and then you have some outdoor furniture, which you could get on Ruby Lane. Yeah, right so yet. it's, yeah. you, I mean, this has, it's telling a story. You could have the baby coming along. She's using her she's using her muff to hide the baby. You know, you could. That's what museums really are stories. They are stories. And and when they when people try to tell you that oh we're about no it's a story. Mm -hmm. It's a, and if you don't get that I think you'll lose you'll lose your customers and your attend, attendees are your customers and then they picked we we did a brew program today. So they picked this beautiful caramelite, caramelite brew. Now, it has a beautiful dress and a beautiful hat and a beautiful wig, but if I were able to keep it, and I'm not, because I, I, as I said, I have to pay bills, what I would do with her is I'd take her clothes off and I'd display her. <laughs> oh, but that body and, oh, she's I would so display her in the museum situation without her clothes. Right and I put her clothes on a mannequin next, next to, to her, her. because this is Christine. a big brew to have a body that's that mint is really very unusual and usually you can see that there's the wear where the ball the, the ball joints move so that gives you the indication that it wasn't made up you know last Tuesday it's the real thing but I think that's really a wonderful piece and of course I love her, I love her hat but she has the wonderful hat I love her hat but you know what look at her beautiful wig so you know you could do her with the clothes look on the that. side and you know next to we've got a great bathtub that you could put next to her like she's gonna do a bath um, when you think oh, and, that the, and they pick this see I'm on all right on you could give her a little bath set oh she needs that see See, we got some a display. She absolutely going. needs that as a perfect size for her. When you think of brews, this is how we want to see them. Yeah, and, and the eye color is very unusual, and she's very beautiful. She's absolutely dreamy. So no, much fun. It's a beautiful piece. And then this snuck up on on me, as you know, I got the eye to show this. Behind you is this, which well, we I think Murray we had this. We got Murray. <laughs> He's I've, obviously enjoying I bore all of her. <laughs> Murray every time I talk. He just <laughs> he says I, not I another doll. Oh, this is fantastic! Oh, we we learned about we, this we in a trend. We looked at this in a trend, but you know what? They were picking things that 
would be correct for a museum to have. And here you have a piece that's never, nothing's ever been taken out of it. So it's really kind of a wonderful thing to have. Um, you know, I would never remove the things from it. And this also, too, in a museum situation, eventually you run out of shelf space. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have that already. Um, next place that we're going is we're going up and on the walls. And this could be put in a plexiglass front box, made, you know, easily made, yeah. and you could hang this on the wall. We've just bought lots of brackets. Yeah, and we bought lots of brackets. Having, uh, brackets so, on and the then walls. you could hang this above it. Well, and you absolutely need to hang things from the walls. Yes. Wow, look at the look at the case on that. That is a beautiful label. And the nice thing about it is it's easy, Service easy metal. to to um, research that and find the maker, and then that's part of your description. A lot of our things, unfortunately, there's not enough time in the day. We don't have descriptions on them, but usually, okay. but we will. But usually what the people that come to our establishment want is they want us to pour our heart out and tell them each and everything. And we so, do. And we do. And we do. And but, we're happy to do but the one thing that nobody picked, but I'm going to add to it, and we don't have to move it, is, but look at this incredible enamel stove. And look how cute these two <laughs> things would be together. Oh, that stove is wonderful. Look at the color and see, you know, some with the color. And then what you do is you get some pink cakes and various things. Oh, how cool. And then that picks up the pink in your yeah, dress. Is tile. It is porcelain and this tile. is porcelain tile. And this is a gorgeous stove. Beautiful. And I think that's on Ruby Lane too. Kitchens. I believe for a fact your, this is on Ruby yeah, Lane. So kitchen, it's it is fantastic. fun to see it in person. And look, Giggy looks so cute next yeah. to it. Yeah. And then you put her with a little kitten. Or you can have her be bad Giggy. And she could have a little frog. And she could be making some frog legs. <laughs> she's making <laughs> frog legs. <laughs> but she's French. <laughs> it's just like she's chicken. <laughs> Yeah, like so. Oh, that is so much fun. We are not signing off because we have to give people a little bit more uh, of a tour of the Carmel Doll Shop. And of course, you can look at some more brews. We have more brews. Yeah, we've got brews. <laughs> they have brews. They have everything that you could possibly want. If you want a little keepsake from our fabulous week here, again, everything that you are seeing... Tons of dollhouses. There is more dollhouses than are actually in this room, but a lot of them are again on their Ruby Lane shop. So it's so fun to see these things in person. There is nothing like seeing something in person or at a show. We are a website, but we we are so supportive of shows and of brick and mortar stores and it has been the best thing ever to just bring all of this into your living rooms. David's still shopping for the museum. Keep shopping. He's, he's just found a good one. The reason why all these people are tuning in is because they love dolls and they love shopping. And you so. know what, Rachel, I can't believe that my crew didn't pick this incredible painted eye dolliac. Oh, the table was full? Okay. I mean, that is a fantastic thing. And look at, here's your tableau in a museum. You've got a tufted chair. Love that chair. A, a side table. Look at that. And that's all you need. And you've got a beautiful display. It's so stunning. Her outfit, that face. She almost looks like a hure. Uh-huh. And well, you know, with that painted eyes, that gives it that very unusual look. But I, I would have thought they would have picked that, but I tried to stay out of it to be There's furniture democratic. back there. Too fluffy to take out. <laughs> well, she is fluffy. We are going down here. We are seeing all, all this dollhouse furniture. Just amazing. I'm getting down. Getting down. Again, the Carmel Doll Shop is one of our most active Ruby Lane shops. We are so proud of them. The Grovian Museum is where we have been seeing all of these wonderful seminars this week. Look at this, everybody. Yeah, did Michael choose something? I didn't choose anything. You didn't the only choose thing anything. I had was the stove at the end. 
We did like that yeah, still. Because I just wanted the color. But you know what? Here's something that I would have picked too. But I think that in a way, what they they picked plenty of things. I also I was thinking if I had a choice, this china with the wardrobe, that would have been nice. And um, who's this? Is that Humpty Dumpty sitting right there? That, yes, that's a, that's Humpty Dumpty. He's adorable. I mean, he doesn't go with the chinas, but but this wardrobe is yeah. fantastic. So I would have picked really. This doesn't go here, and these don't go here. But I would have probably picked this, you know, based on what they had adding to it. I would have picked this because it's a wonderful china with wonderful clothes. We just love they a good trousseau. They picked a lot of things similar to Evelyn Worth, but Evelyn Worth would have been a wonderful thing to add. Again, it's a charity bazaar seller. That would have been um, something I might might have picked. And of course, you know what? I'm. David and I think both think very seasonally, so I might have also picked this uh, we, mini yeah, we Persepio. We touched on this, yes. Because you know we've got the massive Persepio that Jose Cabrera shall, shares with us, but I think I picked this mini one. You could add a couple more figures and a few more things, and this would be a nice thing to have at, at this time of the year. And because you know, not that we don't have anything against any religion. We would celebrate any holiday. I love all of them. But this is an important part of the gift giving process mm -hmm. in many, many cultures. So we, we can't deny this. And of course, there's some of the first three dimensional art that exists. Exists, exactly. And it is so incredible. So if you guys saw uh, Jose's video on his Persepia, which if you haven't, you must see it. It is in our playlist. And, and you must see it in you life, must see it too. In life. It's something to see in life. You have to see it in the day, and you have to also see it at night. If you're a doll person, make the pilgrimage. This is a must-stop place in your doll journey. And uh, to answer your question, Kristen, yes, everything you're seeing is for sale. We're not in the Grovian Doll Museum. We're in the Carmel Doll Shop. But we're playing, we were playing we are, museum. We, yes, we were playing museum, but uh, everything you see is for sale in the shop, and, and it is amazing. And look, they're still working at it. <laughs> they're still discussing. They're still going. It's been so much fun this we're entire week. We've got a layaway plan. Yeah. <laughs> look at this house. That one is on Ruby Lane. There's so many. This, this place is just incredible. Did we add something, ladies? Or we're still discussing? Oh, look at her wonderful hat. Molded bonnet. With luster. With luster wear on the and top. You know, that really helps in this story. That's our earliest porcelain. She is so just... we don't really have, we have porcelains that are all close to the same age. That Jeez. is, that. that Tiny I can hardly stand not um, keeping that. <laughs> I'll give you a good price. <laughs> Take it out of my page. <laughs> Let's see if we can just open this real quick. I want to, oops, we're going to move this down here so I can show you guys just some of these dolls behind this case right here. Look at that. If you guys are tuning in and you're having as much fun as we have, share our video so everyone else can see it. Oh, thank you, Judy. We just opened another doll case here in the Carmel Doll Shop. And we are shopping. How fun is it to be shopping on a Wednesday afternoon here? <laughs> we have more seminars to come this week, but we needed to just... We need a shopping fix. We needed a, a shopping fix. There's a bunch of Becca scenes. Look at all those Becca scenes. I, th I love what you guys picked. I think you all picked wonderful things. And it does, t it does tell a story. Yeah, we got a little bit of the 20s. We're looking up high. 40s. Look up high, now everybody. We have 50s with what Look at all the dollhouses up high. No, I mean, it really is a chronological story of dolls and this uh, studio giraffe is just absolutely amazing what what giraffe <laughs> <laughs> you walk in and it's like oh my goodness it's just incredible sometimes we have an elephant in there too 
and there are three English Bulldogs usually, which is always so much fun. So again, we will link the Carmel Doll Shop in the video. Let me just pull up the back of their card right here so you can get their phone number, get their website. You can call anytime. If you see something in the video, take a screenshot and email it and say, I want that. They'll be glad to help you out with it. Michael, thank you so much thank for this you. wonderful you, tour. Thank we have been you. having the best time. Oh, it's been fun. Judy and, uh, uh, Judy and Kay, how are you guys? Having fun? You guys have been helping out all week, too. It's been so wonderful, surrounded by everybody. And, of course, David, thank you so much for everything. It's not over. We're, we're still hanging out here. But, but this was a very fun virtual tour, and we can't thank you guys enough for your hospitality and, and sharing the world of dolls with our world. Thank you. And the entire world. Thank well, you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.